How's it going everyone? It's Kieran from MechTech here and in today's video we're going to be learning how to install a cigarette lighter cluster in your motorcycle. The bike we're using for this mod is my 1992 ZXR250 Kawasaki. The cigarette lighters are going to go in the side infills of the bike as I find it to be much smoother and better looking as opposed to on the front dash. The product was purchased off eBay as opposed to other local online websites. There are many different variations of the same product available. In this particular brand, all the inserts are interchangeable and they come in single, dual, tri and quad clusters. The build quality of the product is pretty good considering the price and mostly consists of plastic and bits of metal. The cluster also comes with a cigarette lighter insert, which is always nice. This is quite rare considering the price of this product category. And now, without further ado, let's begin the installation process. The tools needed for this mod are really not that many. You need a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, preferably with adjustable bits, a set of allen keys which is for removing your fairings, a roll of electrical tape, and a splice socket is optional but preferred. A handheld drill or drill press are one of the most needed tools for this installation. Some other useful tools which are not 100% necessary but are recommended include some wire strippers, a soldering iron and a hot glue gun. Now for the first part of the installation, we first need to remove the fairing infills. On my bike, this is done just using a screwdriver. Now we want to mark out where we want to drill the insert holes. We then drill out the three 30mm insert holes in our infills which we have marked out. Please make sure you wear protective eyewear when doing this process. Next we use a special deburring tool for smoothing out the edges, as well as a file. However this step is not completely necessary. Here we are inserting each individual part to see if they fit properly, and screwing them in from the bottom. These screws are provided with the product, however, we recommend gluing them in permanently to make sure they don't fall out. The hot glue gun should be used for this process. Make sure each ring screw is twisted in tightly, and also don't forget to make sure each component is facing the right way before you screw it in fully. In this step, we need to strip each of the six wires. Here, we are using some wire strippers. Please bear in mind that the wires are not included with this product. In this step, we are also stripping the wires, however we are demonstrating using some pliers instead. Pliers can be just as effective as wire strippers, however they can take some getting used to. Six of these wire end sockets are however included with the product and we will be using these on one end of each wire. In this part, pliers are used to crimp down each end. However, a special crimping tool can be used as well, although pliers tend to just do the job. We also recommend gluing or taping around each end, just to make sure the wire does not come loose. At this point, you need to decide where you are going to wire your charger clusters to. On my bike, I found it easier wiring to the tail light. However, for you, you may find it easier wiring to the headlight, the instrument cluster, or maybe even the main wire loom. If you decide to wire to your tail light, please make sure that your positive connector is also wired to the main positive connector of the tail light. If you splice it to the secondary positive wire, the following will happen, such as in this clip. If the positive wire is plugged into the secondary positive terminal, then the light will turn on when the brake is pulled. This is why you want to make sure that the wire is plugged into the main positive cable. After you have found where the main positive and negative cables are, you need to splice the wires. First, we cut the main positive wire from the tail light loom. The pliers are used for this. Also, make sure there are at least 1 to 2 inches room left on each side. The cut wires should then be stripped and then twisted together, such as in this photo. Here, we have cut off a piece of the splice socket mentioned earlier, and we have used the two twisted wires and put them in one end. Now that the positive wire is spliced, the exact same should be done with the negative wire. Next, the stripped ends of the wires which lead directly to the charger sockets now need to go to the splice socket. You should ensure that the splice tail light wires also connect to the positive and negative wires which lead directly to the charger. 
Now that the wiring's done, you can now run the cables down underneath your tank or next to your main wiring loop. Now you can turn your bike's ignition on and you should see the voltmeter light up. When you pull the brake lever, you should see the voltage drop. Now that the wiring's all done, all you need to do now is either tape or glue any exposed wiring in the whole loom. And then, all you need to do next is put the rest of your fairings and plastics on. If all the steps in this tutorial were followed correctly, well congratulations, you've now finished the cigarette charger mod. You can now use this handy charger to check the voltage of your battery, light a fire in an emergency, or charge your phone, GPS, or any other item. All of this can be done with the bike turned on or even if the bike is running. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. We hope this video was useful to you and you learned some valuable information. If you've completed this mod as well, feel free to contact one of the admins on our Facebook page down below. Feedback is welcome down in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you everyone for watching and stay snazzy.